So what I want you to do is gather together in groups of eight. Do not sit beside the person you're right next to. Try and do that. So some of you move upward and some of you move back down. It's a natural resort for families, woods and up the all day, for riverside walks, and it's a big effort. And there's a project there for us. Um, well, we talked about the strengths of uh, North Cork and we divided them into four headings. First of all, I suppose, our infrastructure. We've got three airports at our disposal. We have Cork Airport, we have Farren 4 Airport in Kerry. All you need to do is hop on the train in Mallow and you're in Farren 4 in less than an hour. And get into your car or into a bus and go off to Shannon Airport and you're there in little over an hour. So we have three airports uh, in our, for our region. We have in Mallow is the crossroads of Munster. So we have a wonderful uh, railway junction in Mallow. And uh, we, we have trains going to Dublin, trains going to Cork, trains going to Kerry all the time. Uh, we have improving roads all around. And then we also have, uh, for example, uh, then our amenities. What do we have? Well, we have... Um, uh, for example, we have uh, a very good race course, uh, we have uh, the, um, with the donkey sanctuary here in, in, in Liscarroll, uh, we have Ballyhas Lakes, uh, we have marvellous fishing on the Blackwater and all the tributaries of the Blackwater. Uh, we also have, uh, for example, um, uh, um, then we have, uh, I'm, I'm sure, of course, all our GAA clubs are very, very strong. Uh, our soccer, our rugby, uh, everything is uh, thriving and handball is making a comeback, which I'm delighted to know about. Um, we have a very, very... What about road bowls? Road bowls, yes, road bowls. Thank you, absolutely. Uh, a speciality in North Cork. Ourselves and County Antrim are the main parts of Ireland that do the road bowling. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we have lots of, um, not only do we have the races in, in Mallow race course, but we have beautiful point to point races all through the point to point season. And uh, then talk of our heritage, well, we are seeing that we're talking about the, uh, the horses. Uh, we have in North Cork, the second oldest fox hunt in the island of Ireland, the Doohalla Hunt, founded in 1745 and still going strong. And we have here, between Buttermont and Donnerail, the first steeplechase going back to 1752, uh, which is a very, very historic uh, incident uh, uh, happening. We have, of course, Caramy Horse Fair. And uh, you know, the, uh, it is said that Napoleon's favourite horse, Marengo, yeah. was bought in Caramy. Yeah. So um, then uh, we have all the amenities. We have wonderful castles all over North Cork. I, no point in talking about them. There are so many of them. We all we all have our favourite castles. Some of them still inhabited. Some of them uh, interesting ruins, but at least most of them are under national monument protection. We have here, for example, near here we have Spencer's Castle, where he wrote part of the Fairy Queen, going right back to the 16th century. And we have, uh, needless to say, numerous uh, holy wells. We have the famous Saint Bridget's Well, uh, not far from here. And we have Mass Rocks, we have uh, Follock Fia, we have, for example, Ring Forts all over the place. And uh, then, um, uh, as well as that, we have great uh, Georgian houses. For example, one of them we all know at Longeville House, the most beautiful hotel, but a wonderful Georgian house. So uh, we have all these. And then as well, we have lots of traditional Irish music. Um, all over North Cork, a lot of it not kind of, uh, I think, known, so well known, uh, but it is there. We have a great uh, tradition, for example, in church town uh, of uh, traditional singing and things. So um, then as well, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, the commercial aspects of North Cork. We have the dairying industry and all the, we have dairy gold, of course, and then we have uh, micro breweries, uh, artisan cheese making, and we have, uh, for example, uh, the Ballyhower, the uh, cider, 
and we have uh, the uh, brandy being made in Longaville House. So we're making use of our own produce as well. So I'm sure there are lots of other... The walkways. Oh, the walkways. Uh, thanks, Valerie. We have the walkways, which are being fostered more and more all over um, North Cork. And uh, they're gradually coming into their own. And I think we can learn a lot, actually, from the Waterford walkway and also perhaps from the Cooley Peninsula and from all the other areas that we've heard about today. But I think we have a lot going for us. And well, you've certainly filled more than a page up there on the list. <laughs> so uh, we, we'll see what the other groups come up with. Okay. Thanks very much, Helen. Um, we picked uh, three. Well, we had a really good discussion um, looking at the inspiration from all the talks. Uh, today we came up with three um, very action-oriented opportunities uh, for North Cork. Uh, so one thing that uh, was very inspiring today was the network, uh, the kind of regional network of towns and villages working together. So we thought that would be something that would be possible for North Cork, um, for the kind of community groups and uh, the agencies and so on who are working together to create a network to see how they can you know, work together um, to kind of promote their work together and, and also to make sure that nothing is duplicated and, and that people aren't in kind of direct competition. Um, we looked at the opportunity, um, again thinking about this regional network of uh, uh, marketable driving trails and, and also walking trails, so we thought the steeplechase and, uh, could be a potential walking trail and so to look at this through this network uh, and working together. And then the third point that we had um, was a heritage audit, and I think the uh, strength group has done some of the audit work uh, already, but we were thinking that if there was an audit um, done to assess the assets, but also the resources, the, the kind of human resources, the groups who are working uh, in North Cork, and also the character of North Cork, that um, this could be used then to promote um, uh, like itineraries, or, or we talk very much actually not so much about itineraries, but letting the tourist um, have the opportunity to explore themselves by, by showing the, the extent of what's available in the region, but the things could be promoted together and shared as, uh, you know, kind of targeted uh, audiences and marketed that way. I think that's it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so here's the bad news. Well, the good news is the good news is that the um, the weaknesses are vastly outnumbered by the strengths. So that's a good piece of news. So just a couple of points. Uh, I think the principal point that came out from our discussion was that you know, we were looking at North Cork overall, not just any one particular place. Just a lack of cohesion. Um, you know, Butterbent have a great heritage group. There's another great group over in Donnerill. There's a group in Fomoy, which maybe not as strong, but and I presume there's a group in Mallow, but there's no cohesion between all the different groups. Um, the other thing is that the, what is North Cork? You know, somebody said to us earlier there, if you look up tourism in North Cork, you won't find anything really. Yeah, yeah. So what is North Cork? Where, do, where does it stop? Where does it end? You could say from the Nagel Mountains to the Valley Horrors, but where does it stop? We were, I was even having an argument with one of the group how far east it goes. Does it go as far as Moya or further? Does it go west of Mallow? So there's that. There's no overall package for a tourist coming in. There's no overall package. There's no strategy. Uh, that's the second big thing. The other thing, then I suppose, kind of follow on from that. Uh, my other things. Um, th th there's no real history of tourism in the area. No real culture of tourism in the area. Um, I, I think myself, it's because it's such a rich farming area that people haven't had to t ever had to turn to tourism. Like maybe in West Cork, there were, there's nobody here from West Cork would be here. <laughs> Don't mind me insulting the land down there. <laughs> um, so everything else really um, it, it, that we've come up with, there, there was issues about uh, access to a lot of the heritage sites, a lot of them on private property. So, something could be done about access. But the big points are uh, the cohesion, an overall strategy, an overall mapping package. That's badly needed for the area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we actually came up with a number of threats, unfortunately, but we've grouped them together uh, to have the top three threats. So um, obviously the first one, I think, for most people would be um, funding and lack of funding. And um, for example, for the conservation of monuments, if you're going to have an increase in tourism, well, that puts a demand on the resources so you need um, funding, etc., for sustainable management. And um, also, um, heritage is kind of unique in a way in that 
the slow pace of heritage projects can be very frustrating because of the legislation in place and um, also could be intergenerational. You start you know, one generation and it might not actually be um, have a result in so maybe the next generation. Um, so um, that lack of um, investment in heritage itself. The second one that, then that we came up with was um, infrastructure or the lack of infrastructure, whether that's transport or services. So for example, um, if you were using public transport, how would you get to Bushman today? Whereas the interconnection between um, the towns and villages, and also lack of services, accommodation, restaurants, etc. And then obviously the big one um, in the room was the, the motorway and um, how it can bypass North Cork, and also the linear nature of a motorway, you know, going from A to B. So how do you, and the threat of not getting off the motorway to visit um, sites uh, um, like Bushman and other places in North Cork. And then the third one then was volunteers and the volunteer burnout and um, how to keep volunteers motivated and especially with the lack of funding for coordinators and also internally as well when it comes to volunteers and um, you could have the threat maybe of one or two voices dominating um, in committees and suffocating others so you know that's the strong personalities and that you need to have a, a clear voice and um, also the particular demographics that are involved in heritage tourism um, is it engaging all the people and um, all of the representative of all the community? Um, so they were the, the main ones and also the, the problem then in connection with that is developing a product and um, that everybody is going in the same direction and have the same vision and sending out the same hymn sheet. So they're the top three threats that we came up with. Okay, thank you very much for that. So um, I don't think we will be able to follow the other group that uh, came up with uh, all those strengths earlier. It was. Uh, very uh, comprehensive list. Uh, what we discussed was our uh, heritage in North Cork. Um, all the castles and abbeys and churches, estate houses. We have a fantastic legacy from the past and it is a true strength for North Cork. We have a fantastic natural heritage. Uh, we have discussed the River Blackwater at length and the opportunities there, it's like uh, hidden Ireland, um, you know, the, 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 the route of the black water through the most fantastic woods and valleys, and uh, hardly exploited yet. We're talking about our mountains, and I know the Balahoras have been put to some great use by, uh, uh, by uh, some of the villages and towns in South Limerick, while well, the Balahoras are also in North Cork, and a uh, huge strength of ours. Um, we also talked about our cultural heritage and uh, some of us were up at Springford Hall last night and we, we gate crashed for a short amount of time. Uh, the celebrations of the Shandrum uh, Cayley Band uh, having uh, won the All-Ireland uh, for the third year in a row and they were having great fun and they weren't taking the night off, they were playing away good off at the night. So, uh, so we have, uh, we also mentioned Slaver Lokra and the uh, musical tradition from that end of North Cork, which, um, which we should also include in our strengths. Uh, and we also uh, uh, identified, what the previous group identified, was on uh, the strength of our location. So we're very near to everywhere, really. Um, we have great roads, uh, airports. Um, we're in short distance from two big cities, and not too far from Waterford as well. And uh, we're not too far from the, the West Coast and the Wild Atlantic Way, so we have a great location. So thank you. that's the summary from our group. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's a, a, that's a fine list up here now on the wall, um, or on the, on the board. The opportunities are probably, now I know we ask people to bring it back down to maybe three, so no doubt you have, the other groups might have some comments to make about opportunities there. Um, the one thing I noticed there is um, the volunteer burnout, um, especially with lack of funding and the recognition that you need people on the ground and project managers and tourist officers or heritage officers to really get, the, get things moving. Um, you know, it can't all be down to the volunteer. And, you know, you see, you know you're here, an awful lot of you are volunteers, you're giving up this day for, to, to, to do this work. And I mean, that's hugely, hugely, 
you know, you, you know, great congratulations for it. But it's not something you can do every second week of the year. It's just not possible. Somebody has to be doing the there. Work. The strength of community and the strength of voluntary. Um, they're real strengths to the community. And they're an opportunity as well to get people motivated and get them involved. So um, if you were to now think about the next step forward, what should happen next? What should be done? Um, where should you go from here? Can I just throw that open to people in the, in the audience and see what you think? Um, what, what should be the next step? Holly, what about you? Um, well, I, I, I suppose we, we did have a, a longer conversation. We were trying to come to these three actions and um, there seemed to be a real strength in this idea of a regional network and we got that through the the conversations there, the presentations that we heard today, and just in, in our group here, because we're not all from North Cork, um, but that we are all getting the sense of the flavour of the region and the connections between, for example, Bushvent and Don Rail has been discussed quite a good bit here. So I think that regional network would be a great action to. Yeah, well, that was very, very well put forward with the, um, the Munster Vales. You know, it, it really seemed, and also then even on a smaller scale with Shulela, I thought that worked. Anybody else here now? More of a structured plan for the coming year, so that the EGLA won't be competing against each other on the same basis. They can be supporting each other more than the discouragement. Right. The definition of what is North Cork. Have you had a think about that one? Can I go over here to this group? How do, you, how do you define North Cork? Like for legal purposes, isn't there a couple of legal companies yeah, even involved yeah. trading? Mm -hmm. So what about I, I speak um, We worked with the definition of North Cork as at the boundaries of the county council administrative area. So I suppose that is the one that's kind of been invoked at the moment to deliver a um, leader within. Mm -hmm. And within North Cork, there's three um, leader companies, as we still like to call ourselves. There's IRD to Hello, Betty Howra, and Evan Jew. Now, that's not a negative, that's a positive, because each area, you know, from, say, Midgestown back to Mill Street, there are different areas, different um, needs, different um, needs, different answers, different groups. Um, but how will we come as a collective? I think that really has to come um, through the likes of the Cork County Council to develop a plan for North Cork. Um, the Tourism um, Policy Unit are, have a plan for Visit Cork, but we are trying to champion North Cork because we feel that we only get 3% traditionally of the visitors coming through. And the signage which we've been advocating down in Dungarvan, which takes them along through Cork to turn them up through Lismore to bring them along the valley hasn't happened. And so there's lots of issues there, I think, that as a collective group uh, in North Cork, as defined even by the administrative bound, uh, boundaries, um, could, could have a, a voice, a collective voice. Um. That was the message that Brian Maher was trying to get across, wasn't it? Yeah. Where he really talked about, you have to decide what you want, and then you have to go hell for leather and get it. And I mean, really that decision, it's no longer enough to just expect somebody to come in and do the thing. It has to be done. But again, not, um, not, not competing against each other uh, for limited funding, but you know, that kind of strength and unity and uh, creating a synergy is what, what really works. Now, this gentleman down here, your hand up. Now, I don't look, if I can go the whole way to you, we might run out of wire. Yeah, I have to agree with Valerie, 100%, on one key point to me, and that's about Cork County Council taking a lead role. And last year, for the past 10 months, I've been chairman of the Cork Regional Chambers, embracing ch uh, Chambers of Commerce and Charleville, Kentork, Mallow, um, Middleton, uh, Cove, uh, uh, and we were all a subcommittee of Cork Chamber, right? And really what struck me, and what we've been talking about for quite a while, is that we're very much at the Hitney place, right? Very much at the Hitney place. Because you have Cork Chamber sitting in, in Summerhill North, uh, supported by uh, the big industries in the Cork in a greater, great, the greater Cork area, but there's nobody shouting for the rural areas, 
North Cork or West Cork. Nobody shouting. And uh, I met with uh, officials of Cork County Council last February with Conor Healy, who is the uh, president of, of, of the CEO of Cork uh, Chamber, and we got nowhere. And what we were looking for was one person who would work solely uh, developing policies for the rural areas. And we got nowhere. So I think, you know, we all need to, uh, to hit our public representatives to, to try and get, you know, policy officers who would have no other function other than developing policies and coordinating policies for rural areas. All right, John, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, the hands are going up all over the place now. It's great to see it. Um, yeah, we'll come over. Yeah, I mean, again, it's the who's responsible. I, I, just in terms of rural Ireland, I was on a, a debate there the other night, a um, couple of nights ago, and um, they, there was a map done of Ireland, which is very different to the map of Ireland. And what they basically did was build the counties up in terms of population. So Leitrim nearly disappeared. I think there's only 28 or 38,000 people in Leitrim. Dublin became, and you know, no offence to anyone, but it became like a huge pregnancy in that it nearly bulged out as far as Galway. And the surrounding Leinster counties had all bulged out because they were making the counties pro rata to their size. Um, it, it was just such an example of poor planning. But the answer was very much um, inside the N50 is where we develop. Outside of it is rural Ireland. And rural Ireland is going nowhere. So, you know, rural Ireland really has to step up and claim its place in terms of planning and, and everything else in the country. So um, I pass it over to yourself. Thank you. Um, just going back to the gentleman as council minister and a member of Cork County Council. Just on your idea that you spoke about there and perhaps and how we can help and perhaps Connor would support me on this as well. We do have development meetings every month and I would suggest that we bring a group like this into Cork County and to speak on the development of group of this group and it is to put you in a positive. We have different fundings and it's sometimes not it's difficult for smaller groups to know what that funding is. And it, it's in an opportunity like a development meeting that you can grasp where funding is. We have very good municipal authorities. We have town development funds, and I'm, I know Butterfield itself has taken advantage of it over the last number of years. But I think until we bring you into the county level and, and bring you into a development meeting specifically on what your needs are, that you won't find out what you can actually grab. And I'm sure Connor would support me in this, and we can, we can request it if it's something that you're interested in. And you'll get to meet all 55 councillors from across the county and get information from all of those as well, what they have and what they need also, and use it to your advantage. Would I, is it a good I mean, suggestion, Chief? Yeah. yeah. I mean, something like that. The, the, the concept of, of you know, uh, and it needs, to be, it needs to be teased out, in the, what, what is actually required. Mm -hmm. Because you, 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 you need, it needs to be teased out. There are certain areas right, where, especially now with environmental issues and all that coming down the line, there are opportunities that need to be identified for rural areas specifically for rural areas, without having a, a, a county council hat on, or a government hat on, right? Uh, and, and how that's done, uh, you know, is, ha, has, has to be teased out. Then there are the other issues of how you coordinate the various small community groups that we, we've heard about here today who are doing great work. And if they were coordinated, and then uh, in all probability, the sum of what they're doing would be be far greater than what it is today. So there are a number of issues. It isn't just one particular issue, but uh, that all of that needs to be teased out. But certainly an opportunity like the one you've suggested, where mm -hmm. we could sit down and tease out what needs to be done in terms of promoting and developing the rural island uh, with the council as the lead partner, right? Uh, is something that is, it would certainly be worth doing. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm a firm believer in a bottom-up approach. I much prefer communities to be telling us what they need rather than us telling us telling them what you need. It's it's a bottom-up approach, and I'm and yourself, you're now um, all the the development companies would be an advocate of that as well. So s certainly, I I bring that, and I'm sure Connor will as well. I'm sure it'll be a huge advantage. But also, just to remind you, we do uh, as municipal authorities. We do come out to, to towns um, at least once or twice a year and we have met with the community council. So I would say for our next meetings again to get this group involved as well and, and for us to be able to listen to you because we don't know what you want until you tell us. 
and certainly that development meeting will be the opportunity, but I'd also say take advantage of when we do come out to the communities for our municipal meetings and we'll meet you there as well. All right? Thank you very much. Thanks, Um I just want to reiterate exactly what you've just said. Um, I'm Lorraine Granger and I'm a tourism consultant what they call a senior one, which means I've got 30 years experience. Um, and I'm deeply rooted in community and rural tourism. Um, and I'm going to tell you it as it is. You can, and Cork County Council is a client of mine, I do some work for them. You can go to all the meetings you want in County Hall and you can feel very good about it and think you're making progress. The County Council does what they do very well with their administrators. What you need to do is mobilize as a community, make friends across the border with Donnerail, and then two or three groups go to the council and you say, this is what we want to do. How can you help us? Trey is still here. I know Clare County Council are partners with you in Loophead. If Loophead sat back, and this is no reflection on the Clare County Council, if Loophead or the Borough and Tourism people sat back and let Clare County Council lead on the projects, they'd still be going to meetings. The community grasped it and did it. You are the solution. And it's your energy and your commitment that will drive it. If you're making phone calls to Fort Ireland or to County Hall, they'll see you because you have representation in the community, you get shag all done. You're the solution. Deliver the solution to Fort Ireland and to, Clare, or to Cork County Council. Well, now, I think that fairly, um, that fairly uh, summarises what today has been about and what uh, the objective going forward must must be um, so uh, uh, you know I, I, excellent and yeah, somebody written that down okay. <laughs> it's on tape it's great look at um, I think the aim is to finish up as near to 4 p.m. as possible um, Tom you're going to say a few words are you to to wrap things up or is that the, the program I have one more man here now with his hand up um, so look at uh, you know that that really summarised it. Um, you know what what needs to be done. I, identify the opportunities in rural areas. Work together. Um, make friends with the groups beside you. Go with a common purpose, and tell the development agencies, the county council, whoever it is, tell them what you want, rather than be waiting to be be told what you'll get. Okay, this gentleman here, and then I'd be uh, saying. And is there anything else you want me to do, Anne? Is that we wrap up then? Okay. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Hugh Shepherd. I'm from Doroy County Leash. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to contribute an awful lot to this uh, session here, uh, but I did hear a, a, a comment earlier on about the motorway coming down the line, and uh, uh, people need not be afraid of that in Buttevant. Um, we were in the same position in 2010 as I believe Spur. As Brian gone, uh, Dora's a much nicer place, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, what, what we did uh, about six weeks before the motorway opened, we put up huge signs on the Cork Dublin Road, both sides of Dora, and we said, Thank you for 500 years of custom and support. And uh, the day the motorway opened, we held a, a big party, community party on the green. And we said, Doro is not going to be a ghost town. Because that was the talk at the time. It was going to be a ghost town. It uh, transpired that it is definitely not a ghost town. Because we came up with uh, the Scarecrow Festival in Doral, um, uh, which now attracts 25 to 30,000 people to that festival. The place is actually thronged. Doral is punching way above its weight for a small place. And uh, so I would say to people in Buttevant, come up with a good idea, and people will come into Buttevant, regardless of the motorway. So thank you. Thank you.
so that's just really lovely and positive. I've been up there for the Scarecrow Festival. They're absolutely fantastic and so scary. And they pop out of everywhere at you. Um, so, uh, wonderful job. And uh, um, look, at, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. We, in my own family, we had our own little bit of history last night. Um, my husband tells me now that it's the first child of a child of the house came to our house last night after 59 years. So uh, my little granddaughter, she's eight weeks old, so I'm anxious to get home to see her. Um, but uh, it's the first baby into this house in 59 years. The child of the child. So um, it's, uh, it's that nice little bit of history ourselves. So Tom, to wrap up, and uh, again, it's been a huge pleasure to be here. The positivity, oh, it just makes me so happy, you know, because it's, it, it is what rural Ireland is about. It's resilience and positivity and get up and go. And, uh, and, and it's there, and it's, it's all over the place, and it doesn't get the support and the publicity in particular that it really deserves. Anyway, well done to everybody here today. It's been a pleasure. And to the Heritage Society, fantastic work. I, and all the history that's coming up the stairs and everything, and it's so well kept. Fair dues to everybody that's doing it.